Okay guys, so in this video, I'm gonna do a quick overview of one of the, what I found to be one of the most important tables in HP tuners, especially with these Gen 3, 4, and 5 uh, GM trucks and cars, and that has to do with the minimum spark table. And I'm gonna explain really quickly why. Um, so especially, uh, I'm gonna pull up a Gen 3 file, especially as it pertains to a Gen 3 vehicle with a 4L60 or a 4L80 transmission that are really, really um, sensitive to the torque management. You know, one of the, some of the tables that a lot of people like to turn off, and I'm gonna show you here, is if we go under engine, we go under spark, and we go to, actually if we go to torque management, okay? So over here, okay, the spark retard versus torque reduction and, and torque loss versus spark retard, these two are an inverse of one another. Um, but a lot of people like to go in here and simply zero this out. And something that, I, that everyone needs to be aware of is that when you hover over this and you read it down below, okay, it says the values amount of the the values affect the amount of spark retard commanded by the VCM to achieve the desired amount of torque reduction. Setting this table to zero will disable any torque management related to spark, including transmission shift torque reduction. So, those of you that are setting these tables to zero, yes, the transmission shifts are going to be much cleaner and much crisper. However, what you're also doing is if you go over here, one of the major killers under transmission and torque management. Okay, this is the amount, okay, uh, of torque that's allowed to be pulled during the shifts, okay? And those of you probably know that when you zero all of that out, and if you don't know, I'll show you what it looks like, okay? When you go to do a drive, okay, there's a certain amount of spark that has to be pulled um, during the shifts. And this is because the transmissions, uh, these four speeds are related, are, uh, only good for 350, 360 foot-pounds of torque over their lifespan, okay? So when you're driving, okay, and you can see here we've got a uh, spark, um, and actually what I'm gonna do is move spark up here, and I don't need injector duty cycle up here. We'll move this down, okay? So what you're looking at here, whoops, what you're looking at um, is going to be, during the shifts, you're going to see um, these big giant pockets, actually, what I'm going to do is zoom out some. Okay, and if you're logging what gear you're in, you can see right here, transcurrent gear. Okay, and you'll be able to log and see the amount of spark that's being pulled. I just have to see if this file has, let me set the spark up better. Let's see the max, let's just set this to 40, and the min, let's set this to negative 25. Actually, trying to get it to where you can see it. Here we go. So, you'll be able to see the amount of spark that gets pulled during the shifts, and you can, as you hover over it, you'll be able to see here. Um, but, especially at wide open throttle, you've got to be careful um, because what you'll see, there we go, right here. So right here, you can see some of these shifts. So I'm in first gear, and as it makes that shift, that little dip right there, you'll notice we dropped to 1.6 degrees of spark. Okay, that's the torque management kicking in. And then again, from here, the second to third, three degrees, okay? And you can see the throttle is only 40, 46%. So we're barely in power enrichment, but we're getting up here, okay? And you can see where it's pulling the spark out of. And you've just gotta be careful that these lower spark numbers on the shifts, it's not a bad thing, okay? Um, and so what that looks like in the file is Leaving this all stock is perfectly fine, okay? Especially it's gonna save the transmission. But if we go over here to engine, okay? Zeroing all of these out, this is the amount of spark and percentage that can be taken out at a, at a given throttle percentage, okay? So when we come over here under spark and advance, this minimum spark table right here, this is, and this is an OEM file, this means that this is the uh, minimum amount of spark that can be taken out um, at a given RPM. This is kind of 1D compared to the Gen 4s and 5s, which we're gonna look at here in a second. But as a good starter, you don't wanna set this to something like five, 
Okay, that means that at a, at a given RPM, this is the minimum amount of spark that can be reached. It's a floor. You, you can't get any, um, you can't get any uh, less than that. However, this can be a little too aggressive. Um, and so what I have found is that by cutting this in half to something like this um, is going to be a good bet. Five degrees is, is going to be, you know, quite a, uh, is going to be uh, quite a bit of difference between what it was. So for a Gen 3, I would recommend starting with this. You don't want to get rid of this entirely. If you set this to something like seven, you know, this means that, that this is the least amount of spark on those shifts. And for some of you out there, it's probably not a good idea. Um, so the nice thing, so that's kind of a 1D type thing. Um, the nice thing is that, let's go over to like a Gen 5. The Gen 4s and 5s pretty much look the same. Um, but if we go over here to a 2015 VET that's an auto, Okay, especially if you have a converter in the car, you got a big camshaft. If we go over to engine and advance, and we come down here to the minimum spark and go to the base table, now we have full control of all of the different cylinder air mass areas, okay, uh, or spark air mass, okay, uh, which is essentially, you know, load, vehicle load, okay. So the nice thing is that out here in this wide open throttle range, we can keep these numbers relatively low. Um, like they are from the factory so the torque management can do its job and you could even do something like this You could cut these in half that way again. We're getting some of those sevens those threes What you might even do is blend this down something like that if you're a if you're a naturally aspirated vehicle You're not gonna get you're gonna struggle to even get in this 0.96 or 92 range but the nice thing is that down here, you know as you're revving the vehicle or as you're you know kind of sweeping through um, you know, during the gear changes, the throttle can feel really sluggish. So what you can do is you can go in here and you can multiply these. Actually, you don't want to multiply a negative number. <clears throat> but what you can do is instead is make these something like five. Okay, and you can kind of blend this in and you have to play with it per your application, but you can kind of blend all of this together. Something like this. Okay, and you can pick up some throttle response in this region by getting rid of some of these negative numbers, but then when you go wide open throttle and it sweeps down through here, you know, if you've got negative 12s and 15s, that's a lot of timing to be pulled. Um, and you can safely run these, these smaller numbers and the torque management is still gonna work just fine. Um, you definitely don't wanna get aggressive in this area you know, um, especially if you've added a camshaft and you're trying to get your, your zero uh, pedal engine torque to zero or within that range, you don't want to use this table as a crutch, okay? Um, I will routinely go in and do something like this, maybe with a 10, and then I'll kind of blend kind of blend these together a little bit. You're probably not gonna end up too much in this range down here. And then we can kind of take this chunk and just kind of smooth this out. And this would be a good starting point. I wouldn't really bother too much with the way the table looks. Um, but essentially, no, I don't wanna save. If you go to a Gen 4, you would have the same, um, the same kind of thing over here under spark, advance, and then you have this base table. Yeah, negative 25s, I mean, so that means that, and this over here, you would just wanna go in here and probably make this like a positive 10. Whoops, I'm gonna add that again, my bad. Trying to do a better job of making some of these videos shorter for you guys. And what you might do in here is go in here and make this, I don't know, like maybe a negative five and you'd have to kind of play with this and see and watch your data log you know and then down here you probably don't want negative 25 you might want like negative eight something like that and then you can kind of blend through it's all going to depend too on your combination and you're going to have to um, and again this is just kind of a down and dirty kind of thing uh, but you see what I'm doing there you just want to make sure you have smooth smooth transitions um, something to add um, is that 
The Gen 4s don't have the long-term table. If we go back to a Gen 5, you would want to make sure that you copy the base spark minimum to the long-term table. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, if it'll load. Yeah, so here you have a base and a long-term, and it looks like right now, I believe, they're identical. You, whatever you do in your base table, you would want to copy to your long-term table. But especially those of you out there with, um, you know, cam cars or trucks and converters, you know, again, um, if we go under transmission, oh, this is a manual car. Whoops. Let's go to a automatic. Um, you know, the question of do I, what do I do with torque management? Do I keep it? Do I get rid of it? You know, here's your, your torque management right here. Keeping all of these values as a one in these six, eight, and 10 speed transmissions is perfectly fine. You're not gonna have any issues. Just that spark minimum table, you can pick up some throttle response um, as well as getting some of those low numbers, you know, kind of just raised up a little bit. Uh, so I've had a lot of questions about, you know, torque management, and I've seen a lot of files, a lot of Gen 3 people get onto me for, for keeping torque management in, but especially in a four speed, unless you got a bunch of money and you can just blow stuff up and just keep running it uh, and having it rebuilt, you need to play around with a way to safely tune the torque management um, without being too aggressive with how you take it out. So again, um, like, comment, subscribe, and drop a comment on what you'd like to see next or if you have any questions about this. If you have a data log or a file you'd like for me to look at, I'd be happy to look at it and I can even make a video on it. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.